AI, neural networks, Gemini, ChatGPT, and all of the other tech that exists are all words that we've all heard way too many times over the past year or so. If you want your company to just be worth more money in an instant, say it has something to do with AI. And don't worry, you've heard nothing yet, it's only going to get worse from here, especially if you happen to run an important open source project, like for example, Daniel Stenberg, the creator of Curl. On a semi-regular basis, he gets absolute nonsense AI-generated vulnerabilities. And this is the most recent example. Integer overflow in lib slash vsh slash lib ssh2.c. This is actually a real file, so it's doing better than some of them. Now to get this out of the way, AI generated does not necessarily mean bad. It might have actually found a real vulnerability that actually should be dealt with. So let's just look at it for what it is, and you'll see why Daniel's not too happy about it. First problem, severity high. If this is actually severity high, this has got to be a really serious problem, like a DDoS being possible, extracting data that you shouldn't be able to extract, possibly a privilege escalation, or anything else that's actually really serious. Let's read the description. In this SSH function right here, at line 2547, there exists a vulnerability related to an integer overflow. Okay, that's something we can actually see. The vulnerability arises from the calculation of the variable size, which is assigned the value of 2 minus from plus 1. This line right here, I'll check the file in just a moment. If the values of 2 and from are such that 2 is sufficiently close to the maximum representable value for the data type being used, subtracting from 2 may result in an overflow. Adding 1 to this potentially overflowing value could exacerbate the overflow or lead to unexpected behavior. Exploitation scenario. An attacker may craft a malicious request with carefully chosen values for to and from such that 2 is very close to the maximum representable value for the data type, triggering an integer overflow during the calculation of size. This could potentially lead to various security issues such as memory corruption, buffer overflows, or unexpected behavior depending on how the size variable is subsequently used. Now, focus on some of the key words being used here. Words like may, could potentially, such as. Keep in mind, this is marked as severity high. This is theoretically a really serious vulnerability. And this isn't just hallucinating the code, it actually does exist in the code base. But even so, it's not being clear about what the actual problem is. It's saying this could happen, this may happen, because the author here didn't actually test the problem to see if a vulnerability actually does exist. Yes, theoretically, this could overflow, and theoretically, bad things may happen depending on how the value is used. But how is the value being used, and does it actually lead to a problem? That's not being indicated here whatsoever. Maybe it's clearer under the impact section. The impact of the vulnerability could be severe, potentially leading to memory corruption, security bypass, denial of service, recommendations, bounds checking, safe arithmetic operations, input validation, error handling, all of these completely reasonable even if this is not a vulnerability. But again, it's saying could and maybe and might. None of this is actually indicating what is going to happen if you exploit this problem. If you don't test if something is actually exploitable, you don't know if it is actually a vulnerability or just a minor bug in the arithmetic. Here we go. Severity justification. Maybe here it actually explains something. The presence of an integer overflow vulnerability at line 2547 poses a high risk to the security and stability of the application. Exploitation of this vulnerability 
could lead to severe consequences including memory corruption, security bypass, or denial of service conditions. But does it do this? Does it do this? Does it do this? There is no indication that this number overflowing actually causes any of those things to happen. Affected versions. This vulnerability affects all versions of the application that include the vulnerable function. Well, considering we know exactly what line of code is causing the problem, it should be pretty easy to find out what the first affected version is. And again, that effort is not put in here. It is just taking what is outputted by the AI system and just accepting it as a vulnerability. Now, it's very important to keep in mind that initially, the author didn't disclose this was AI-generated. If you read through it, it does kind of feel AI-generated, but some people do write in a fairly similar style as well. So because of this, Daniel did give the person the benefit of the doubt. First, if you find and want to report security problems, we clearly ask you not to report them here, but instead do that at hackerone.com slash curl. It is rude and inconsiderate to publish security risks in public at once. So usually what happens with any important project is issues will be dealt with in private, and then once the issue is patched, it'll be sent out to the distros, and then at that point, everything is made public, because if this actually is serious and actually can be exploited, you don't want to have production systems that don't have a patch available. But then, please explain exactly and with details which specific input a user needs to provide to curl or libcurl for this issue you mentioned to become a security problem. Again, they didn't actually say that, all they said is, maybe if you crafted a value that could do this, it could be exploited. But you can clearly tell they didn't actually test it, because they didn't provide that value. The real risk I see here is that libcurl limits the transfer to an unexpected size. But then it is questionable if this can actually happen to a good faith user. And then, vulnerability spotting, in case you didn't realize what their name was, uh, let the cat out of the bag. The issue was detected by our new AI-powered vulnerability scanner. What this always means when anybody says this is, I bought a subscription to ChatGPT and I dumped the code in there and I asked ChatGPT uh, what it thinks about it. Detecting that a similar pattern exists in lib slash curl range C where the overflow is avoided with this check right here. Integer overflows in C are undefined behavior and the behavior of the application is unknown when they arise. As you can tell, this is not getting that much uh, positivity. To which Daniel basically said, No, you're dumb. That's a ridiculous stance that helps no one. If no known compilers on any known platform make anything else but put a funny value in size here, this is not a security problem unless you can prove me wrong. Which they never actually did, because they stopped replying here. Until you have explained yourself and fixed your faulty procedure, I don't think you should continue to file new invalid issues in other projects, or in other projects mirror repos. That's just going to get you reported and or blocked. This is not the only issue where the user has done this. Their account is a little bit more than one week old, and during that time, they have only made two different issues. The other one being on a related project, that being wgets mirror. And again, it is the exact same kind of nonsense. Integer overflows in parse content range and get HTTP. Again, marked as high severity. And again, it's the exact same kind of issue. Which this time, since this is a mirror and not the main repo, I've got a very different response. <laughs> F off with your AI bullshit, which I think is probably a good way to handle this. Are there potential integer overflows here? Probably. The high risk assessment is a stretch. Integer overflows, while technically being undefined behavior, are not automatically high risk. Vulnerability severity is a practical assessment, and at a brief glance, the issues in question don't seem to be very problematic practically. This could potentially lead to various security issues. This is what you should have figured out before reporting this as high severity vulnerability. Or you could have just been honest that you don't know the severity of this vulnerability because you haven't analyzed it properly, rather than inflating the issue with a bunch of generic 
fluff. If you think you're going to get kudos or a pat on the back for finding vulnerabilities using AI, you're incredibly mistaken. Now, to be very clear, both of these actually are integer overflows. They are real issues and they should be dealt with. But especially in the curl case, it is not a vulnerability, or at least not one that is actually viable to exploit. It can be noted that this is an integer overflow under the condition that the user asks for transferring the byte range 0 to 2 to the power of 63, when at the same time the remote file has the size of at least 2 to the power of 63 bytes. I think that's rare. 2 to the power of 63 is this many bytes. I believe it is about 8192 petabytes in a single file. No, no one's exploiting that one. At least not right now. Maybe like, I don't know. Maybe if Amazon decides to send all of their data to you at the same time, there could be a problem. But besides that, I don't think it's going to happen. And assuming they did do that, and for whatever reason, you accepted that transfer, all it would do is crash curl. That's all. Is not severity high? Is not. At all. <laughs> it's not even a vulnerability. It's just an overflow bug. The issue is preparing us for the future where storage is limitless. Look, maybe at some point in the future, this would be a problem that actually could be exploited. It should have balance checking. Well, that's not today. Definitely not today. Now, this guy from WGET also made a good point. For WGET, we got a similar report, that being the one I showed earlier. To be honest, I find it worthy to try writing a tool for automated finding of software defects. Just because the AI tool isn't better than human experts on the first try doesn't mean the tool can't be improved. Other tools like static analyzers and fuzzers had their imperfect early days as well. I think that's a fair point. But I think ultimately, if it does find a vulnerability, at the end of the day, it does need to be tested. Whether that's done with automated testing, whether that's done testing it by hand, whatever the case may be, it needs to be tested because if it has not been tested, maybe you found a bug like what was done in this case. But if you don't know if it can actually be exploited, you don't know if it's actually a vulnerability. A bug is not necessarily a vulnerability but a vulnerability is always going to be caused by a bug. Issues like this being created are the exact kind of nonsense that made Daniel Stenberg want to go and take control of the curl CVEs and make a CNA. This is not high severity, this is not a vulnerability, and this is a really, really bad AI vulnerability scanner and probably shouldn't be used because it's probably just chat GPT. But what do you think? Do you think there's a place for these AI vulnerability scanners? Do you think a person is always going to do a better job? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrub, Silly Barrow Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and find the vulnerability in this video.